This is the formula wheel that we use to solve for electrical equations involving power, current, resistance, and voltage. And the symbols that we're going to see for this, we see P for power, we're going to see I for current, we're going to see R for resistance, and V for voltage. The other symbol that you may see for voltage is going to be E, which stands for electromotive force. So for voltage, depending on what text you read, you can see either V or E. Now the way that we use this, if I know any two things about a circuit, I can discover the rest using the formula wheel. For example, if I want to discover how much power is being consumed in the circuit, and I know the current and the resistance, well, I look in the upper left quadrant here, and I can take current squared times the resistance of the circuit, and that will give me the power. If I know the voltage and current, I can take the voltage and multiply that times the current. If I know the voltage and resistance, I can take the voltage squared and divide that by the resistance. So that's the upper left quadrant for power. If I want to solve for current, I'm going to take the upper right quadrant, and here are my formulas for solving for current. If I want to know what the resistance is in the circuit, I'll take the lower right quadrant here, and I'll look at those formulas. If I want to solve for voltage, I'll look at the lower left quadrant, and I can take a look at the values there. Now, are you going to need to memorize the entire formula wheel in your day-to-day -day work or for the CTS exam? No. Let's make this a little simpler, and let's just deal with Ohm's law here at first. The way to do this is just VIR. That is basic Ohm's law. And the way that we do this is I'm going to put my finger over the value that I want to solve for. So let's say I want to solve for voltage. So I'm going to put my finger over the V, and what does that look like? That looks like I times R. Current times the resistance. If I want to solve for the current, I put my finger over the I, and that looks like voltage divided by resistance. If I want to solve for the resistance, put my finger over the R, and that gives me voltage divided by current. So if I can remember VIR, just put your finger over the value that you want to solve for. That will give me the formula for the rest of it. Let's do three quick little examples here. Let's say I want to solve for voltage. So voltage equals I times R. And the current, the I, is going to be 2 amperes worth of current and 8 ohms worth of resistance. That's going to give me 16 volts. Let's say I want to solve for current. That's going to give me the voltage divided by the resistance. And let's say we have a voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 20 ohms. 120 divided by 20, that's going to give me 6, so 6 amperes worth of current. Let's do one more. Let's say I want to solve for resistance. That's going to be voltage divided by current. Let's go with 120 volts again, and this time the current is going to be 3 amperes worth of current. So 120 divided by 3, that is going to be 40 ohms worth of resistance in the circuit. So VIR, put your finger over the value, and you can solve for the rest of Ohm's law. We can also do something similar with power as it's related to Ohm's law. And sometimes we know this is as, it's as easy as pi. P equals I times E. And we'll write this out just like we did VIR a moment ago. P I E. If I want to solve for power, put my finger over the P, just like we had a moment ago, P times E, easy as pi. If I want to solve for the current, the power divided by the voltage. If I want to solve for the voltage, power divided by the current. Let's do three quick, quick little examples with this. Let's say I want to solve for power, and I'm going to do current times the voltage. The current, let's say it is 0.25 amperes worth of current, and let's say it's 120 volts. So 2.25 times 20, 0.25 times 120, rather, power there consumed in the circuit would be 30 watts. Let's do another one. Let's do current. So that's going to be power divided by voltage, and let's say the power is 45 watts being consumed in the circuit, and again we'll do 120 volts, so 45 divided by 120 
and then hit the Enter key down at the lower right. This tells me that we are drawing 0.375 amperes worth of current. And let's do one more. Let's do a voltage. So voltage equals power divided by current. And let's say the power being consumed in the circuit is 480 watts. The current draw is 2 amperes worth of current. So 480 divided by 2 tells us that the voltage in this circuit would be 240 volts. Besides VIR and PIE, there's actually one other formula that you should commit to memory that you'll use on a practical basis. And this would be in the lower right quadrant, resistance equals voltage squared divided by power. Now, realistically, we're not going to be doing with loudspeakers, and we're going to use that as an example. We're not going to be doing resistance. We're actually calculating for impedance. Obviously, this is not going to calculate for impedance. What this is going to do is it's going to get us in the ballpark. It's going to get us close. So really, what we're going to use is Z for impedance. Z equals voltage squared over power. So let's write that out. Z equals voltage squared over power. And we'll use this in a distributed or constant voltage system. So let's say we're doing this with a 70 volt system. So that's where we're going to get our voltage, 70 squared. If I were doing a 100 volt system, this would be 100 squared. And let's say I'm tapping the loudspeaker at 7.5 watts. So that's going to give us our power, so 7.5 watts. So 70 squared divided by 7.5 and this would be for an individual loudspeaker. So 70, and I can hit the square key, divided by 7.5. And that gets us about 653 ohms worth of impedance. Again, this is going to get us in the ballpark. It's not going to be exact. But now I can actually measure the loudspeaker with an impedance meter and see if it's close to verify what I've predicted.